number 16, Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you, Claire Luck, um, and I'd just like to thank you again, Claire Luck, for meeting um, the Defend Health Services campaign before this meeting and accepting some of the uh, petitions, just some of the collection of petitions that have been raised uh, over the last months in relation to this issue. Uh, this motion is, uh, as written down there, it's very straightforward, uh, or would seem to be, or should be. Um, a dark cloud looms over uh, this county. Uh, for a number of months now, um, it is feared that Lock and Sound Hospital, uh, St. Colin Pills, will lose its 24-hour A&E status. Uh, the HSE and the government uh, shortlisted Lock and Sound among 10 hospitals uh, last year uh, to lose its 24-hour A&E uh, &E status. Um, some of the hospitals within this uh, report have been closed. Uh, Nina and Ennis have been closed with the most obvious results uh, taken place uh, to the detriment of patients. Uh, patients in Limerick Hospital, which sparked uh, an industrial dispute, sparked a strike for nurses in, in Limerick Hospital. Uh, as soon as Ennis and Nina was shut down, patients were actually lying on the floor uh, in Limerick Hospital and hadn't even got a, a, a trolley, never mind uh, a bed in the first place. So uh, this motion is an attempt uh, to safeguard the future health of our constituents. Um, it's an issue that I believe should be brought to the Council uh, and this Council should have uh, support for and should actively uh, campaign towards our local TDs, our party representatives, uh, and as councillors should come out, make a very strong statement to this government uh, and campaign to retain the hospital. Uh, it's been suggested that this uh, hospital uh, is somehow an endanger to patient safety and that it would be uh, better to lose its 24-hour AD status, keeping it open during the day for minor injury service. Uh, should I say that it certainly is not my logic uh, or most people's logic to say that by closing the hospital uh, would be in patients' uh, safety. In fact, the only logic or the only argument that can be ever made for shutting a local hospital is if the resources in the first place uh, aren't put there by government. Uh, last year we were promised many things by our new government. Uh, one of these things is that healthcare will be an absolute prerogative by our new minister, James Riley. Uh, this hasn't happened. Uh, this isn't the case. Uh, this radically isn't the case. In fact, one billion was taken out of health last year, over half a billion uh, this year. And since the recruitment embargo uh, has, has uh, come into effect, we've lost over 6,000 people in the health service, 1,000 of these uh, being nurses. So nationally and locally, there's no justification in shutting this hospital um, or th this service. I should say, uh, and this has come up a few times in this chamber, the issue uh, the absence of a women's shelter in Dunleary, uh, and I think it's absolutely disgusting that we don't have a dedicated women's shelter uh, and women's refuge to deal uh, with specific issues such as domestic violence. Um, Lock and Sound Hospital, its A&E department, uh, contains a social worker there that is the only dedicated social worker to domestic violence in the county, and it's feared by staff there uh, that if it loses its 24-hour and aid status, it will also lose uh, this woman that provides excellent work uh, to the people in the hospital. Uh, so I won't go on too much uh, at this stage. I think it's fairly obvious what this motion, the intentions of this motion are. Um, I would ask the councillors for their support, uh, and I'd ask if they don't support the motion, I'd like to know exactly why and what motivations they have uh, for not supporting the motion. Uh, but please send out a good message, uh, a strong message to your constituents, and a very strong message to this government, and under no conditions uh, will this council be satisfied with the removal of its 24-hour A&E uh, status from uh, the main hospital in this county. Thanks.